everybody welcome back today um, as I alluded to and I think I alluded to it in a previous video um, today what we have is a 1904-39 uh, Portuguese Mauser um, this is the one a lot of people like to call the Viguero style um, very different from some of your other Mausers um, but still a very unique item nonetheless these are the ones that were originally chambered in 6.5 um, and were subsequently rechambered. I believe it was, I believe it was in 1939 to eight millimeter Mauser for the Portuguese. Um, put a link down in the video below for for uh, T Fusor 44's video where he previously did an unboxing of one of these. Overall, his looked very nice. <clears throat> he did have uh, a little bit of pitting in certain places after he took it apart and took a good look at it, but nothing terrible, nothing that would certainly um, warrant making it unsafe to fire. So we're going to see what I got today. I'm not going to bother with unboxing the ammunition. You saw that in one of my 937 videos. Uh, the one specifically from Atlantic Farms. They sent the same 945 rounds, 1939 Greek surplus. Um, so I'm not going to bother with showing that today. And we're just going to get into the, the um, I guess, the meat of it. So it's just going to be the rifle, the bayonet, and whatever else it happens to come with. So without further ado, oh, and by the way, Atlantic Firearms at the time of this filming still has them. They're for eight. I think they have them for eight ninety nine. They'll cost you at least. I don't know about you guys, but it cost me ninety dollars shipping, which is kind of strange because when I bought the nine thirty seven that came with the same amount of ammo, it only cost thirty dollars shipping. But eh, whatever. I think they might have realized they might have been losing some money on that one. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into this. I didn't notice any damage at all on this box, uh, which is a good thing. Um, you know, sometimes you know, the bolt will be puncturing through the side or something like that. And of course, it is factory director, straight from Century Arms. That's where they got these from. Let's put that box aside. A box within a box. You guys might be able to see that label some there. I'm not really sure. Um, looks as though they got these in on the fifth of um, fifth of December. I can't even talk this morning. So let's open this joker up. I am very curious to see what we got here. See how this one compares with T Fuser 44s. Um, hopefully, quite nice. Of course, it could look like absolute crap, but we're gonna find out. Breaking off of my box here. Oh, ah, I see. This isn't the type of box I thought it was. Okay, so this is going to be a little entertaining. Let's get that bayonet out. Let's try to get the rifle out of here. Ah, there we go. Hmm. Okay, so. Since I got that out, I'm going to pause this real quick. I'm going to go grab the blanket, lay it out of the table so you guys can get a good look at this, and I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. As I was pulling it out of the box, that's when I came to the realization. It's like, idiot, you didn't put the blanket down. So my apologies. I definitely wanted to pause it so that we could get a better look at this. Very interesting tag there. Um, so that we can see this a little bit better and you guys aren't dealing with the glare from the table and all this other garbage. So anyway, here we have it. As you guys well know, these are shipped unloaded and I don't know what the crap has happened here with this chamber flag, but dear God, they've done something. Hmm. get this bolt out of here. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> so when they put that chamber flag in there, um, they dislodged the floor plate a little bit. Um, so I had to get that out so that we could take a better look at it. So let's take a quick look at the rifle here. We're going to go down each side. Then I'm going to obviously, as I normally do, we're going to insert pictures so that you guys can see close-ups. So that you guys, if you decide to get one, can hopefully make an informed decision. Let's 
flip it over to the bottom side. It does have a sling on it. I have no idea if this is period correct. I'll have to do some looking into that myself. Notice a little bit of blemishes right there from the sling swivel. This one decidedly has a little bit more rust in areas than T Fusler 44s. Um, that is a 3744. Does that match? think it does. We'll know more about that in just a minute. There's a 3744 um, down there on the trigger guard as well as the magazine floor plate. Anyway, let's flip it over to the other side. That's kind of ugly. They did add this 1904M to the serial number here. Not really thrilled about that. Of course, as you can see on the bottom side there, there is your Century Arms import mark. Okay, so let's check this thing out. Let's check the bolt. Um, you know, it just, just has wear on it. You know, I wouldn't say it's a terrible amount of wear. Um, it's obviously been used some, for sure. It's certainly not brand new. So there's a 3744 here on the bolt handle. There's a 44 back here. And I, like I said, I'm going to have pictures rolling on the side up here. There's a 44 right there on the safety flag. Um, I don't know if there's any more numbered parts on this thing. <clears throat> so let's take a quick look at the rifle. The butt plate, um, surprisingly, is not overly rusted. Um, Let's see. I do not see that it is actually marked. Um, let's see. The bolt release here is marked 44. So let's look at the rest of the rifle. Um, as I was saying, the trigger guard is marked 44. The magazine floor plate is marked 44. The follower is actually got a different marking. Looks like it's marked with a 5.6. Trying to see. I do not see a marking there on the site. Not sure if the site matches or not. It's kind of strange. Um, be that as it may, let's continue further. Let's see. Of course, as you saw before, there's the 1904M-3744. We should have a couple more possibly matching parts. Just looking. Of course, the stock is marked 3744. Um, you will notice this upper handguard does have a small chip out of it. It is a little rusty there. However, it's still all here. I don't see any major major cracks or anything, which is a huge plus. I will note, I'll try to get a picture of this um, as best I can. I know it's not the best lighting. You see that lock screw down there. It's boogered up just a little bit, but nothing terrible. Um, one of the things that I really thought was cool about this Mauser, which most of you guys may not think is so cool, is it's very similar to a Ruger uh, M44. You can see the crease marks where this, you know, this thing was stored. But it's very similar to a Ruger M44 in the fact that the magazine four plate release is right here within the trigger guard. So you simply push that button in and it drops out and you can dump your rounds very quick and easy for unloading. Um, I always enjoyed that about a Ruger M77. Uh, that's my personal hunting rifle of choice. Um, I love the rifles. It's what I grew up shooting. And it's a very quick, easy way to safe a firearm. Well, actually completely safe a firearm. Um, and I, I also love the fact that they have a tank safety on the back. but And a similar Mauser action. But I'll get some close-ups of this crest here. It's Mine is a little bit worse for wear in terms of how it's worn. Um, and then I'll get some pictures of the side here where you can see the markings. Um, 
I'm not even going to try to <laughs> pronounce them. Of course, this one was made in Berlin. Um, all in all, pretty decent looking rifle. I mean, if you if you factor out the cost of ammo, which was if you bought it separately, it was like four hundred dollars. You're essentially paying about five hundred bucks for a Mauser. So, my personal opinion, I don't think that's a terrible. Um, I don't think that's a terrible deal, um, considering the cost of everything these days. Let's check out this bayonet. Of course, they did state that you know bayonets wouldn't match. Um, it's really strange. I didn't know they had these. So they got a button on the top, a button on the bottom. It's not buttons. It's just, I guess, I guess it's different from your tension screw that's typically in there. Of course, this bayonet is numbered. So I can look at it. Looks like six nine six six H. The wood is good. It looks like it's got some of that nasty animal fat stuff in there. The screws look good. The actual sheath. A few little dings here and there, but overall good shape. Uh, your locking button on the back does work, of course. That's necessary, that's pretty important. Well oiled <laughs> bayonet. And like I said, I'll get pictures in here. And Simpson and Company Shul. Um, but very well oiled. And it looks like the drag marks are predominantly right below uh, this bloodletting groove. A um, little bit of drag mark here on the bottom side. But this thing is in excellent shape. The bayonet is. Very nice looking bayonet. No complaints there. Um, but there you have it. Um, this is that 1904/39. Now there might be some rust. I have to, I have to take another, take some time, do another video, get, get this thing out of the stock, take a quick look at it. I do need to take a look at the bore off camera. And guys, that is a, it is a super mirror bright bore. You see the picture up here with an excellent looking rifling in it. Um, I would have no qualms about taking this thing out and shooting it. I mean it's just a it's not a real expensive rifle but you know it's not it's not in bad shape. I forgot to say the bolt head is also matched there with a 44. That's pretty slick. Extractor claws in there. Let's put this thing back in. Wow. I see why people say these are very smooth. They are extremely smooth. That's a very smooth bolt. Very nice. Very, very nice. <clears throat> I got no complaints on that. Um, like I said, I'll do another video. We'll yank this thing out of the stock, take a good look at it. But I just wanted to get this one out there today to kind of give you an initial impression. Um, like I said, there's a there's some decent, you know, I guess you call them blisters or whatever in the wood here. But the bluing is really good. There is some rust on this barrel band here, unfortunately. But, you know, honestly, for what I paid, it's totally worth it. Especially I have this really unique variant to go along with my two 937As. Um, really pleased with it actually so like I said you know this is the ones that were in the 6.5 that were originally made I guess in 1904 and then rechambered 1939 shipped off to Portugal um, pretty neat rifle um, just wanted to share this with you guys today I didn't see any nicks on the crown or anything um, it appears to be like you know just a tiny amount of patina on the upper side of this butt plate but you know, all in all, this thing's in really good shape. You know, I dare say, probably nicer shape than the 937, 937A that I got from Atlantic. But I've got no complaints on it. You know, other than just a couple little minor things, that's not a big deal. Um, no rust on that bolt handle. Looks good. So there you have it, guys. Just want to get this out there real quick for anybody that might be on the fence as far as making um, a decision on whether or not they want one of these rifles. Like I said, at the time of this filming, Atlantic Firearms still has them. Um, 
and I'll try to get this thing out of the wood, take a good look at it, see if I have any of the pitting issues like T-Fusor 44 has. Um, of course, once again, there's a link down in the description for his video, um, so you can take a quick look at his, you know, compare the two that we got, and make your own informed decision about them. Um, I think it's a great, my personal opinion, I think it's a pretty good deal for the money, um, especially getting the ammo with it. Of course, it is corrosive, so always make sure you neutralize those corrosive salts if you're going to shoot them out of a rifle like this. Stay tuned. Um, some of my next or an upcoming video, I purchased a Carl Gustav Swedish Mauser. Got that at a local gun shop. It was manufactured in 1901. It's chambered in 6.5x55 Swiss or Swede or however you want to say it. Um, it's a pretty unique rifle. Um, I've heard those things are insanely accurate and a pleasure to shoot. Um, but it's in beautiful shape for something manufactured in 1901. So I'll get a video uh, or keep an eye out for a video coming up on that. So as you guys can see here, some of the some of the uh, where some of the other rifles were laying, you know, the, the, the slider for the sight or the rear sight, ding that up. Of course, that pretty good size groove right there on the side of the wood there, but there's no cracks in it. Um, but anyway, still looks good. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, given the price, I mean, try to find one of these in a gun shop for 500 bucks. <laughs> That's not shot out or rusted out. So, anyway, be on the lookout for that Carl Gustav uh, Swedish Mauser video I'm going to do. Um, and as I've said before, I'm going to get in. I'm going to get back into some of the refurbishing work here pretty soon. As I get the time, um, I know you guys like to see stuff like that. Um, but just want to thank my subscribers. Thank everybody for your likes, your 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 comments, your shares. Always helps out with the algorithm. As you guys full well know, we are um, we're not at the top of the pecking order when it comes to. Our videos getting out there as people that create this sort of content so I want to thank you guys for tuning in you guys do so much for this channel um, and I greatly appreciate it so until next time thank you guys for watching and y'all have a great day